This channel is made possible by viewers like you. My viewers, subscribers, and patrons greatly help to keep this channel going. I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for all of you. Please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any uploads. And if you'd like to go the extra mile, please check out my Patreon page. For just a dollar a month, you'll get access to what I'm working on, previews of upcoming content, and even early videos, along with other tier options for those that are interested. Thank you, and now on to the video. Even before starting my channel, I really enjoyed searching around for titles that went under the radar. This might be from poor or little marketing on part of the publisher, or in many cases you see the title having the unfortunate release of being next to other big games. And some of those big games can really take up a lot of the oxygen within the space meaning really good and sometimes excellent games can get left in the dust. But when you find and play these games, oftentimes it feels like you found a hidden gem or nugget that isn't really talked about enough. We have been fortunate with many RPGs being released this year, along with JRPGs. One caught my eye a bit that I wanted to try out. It was Trinity Trigger. The visual style honestly looked like a long forgotten 3DS game, and I don't mean that in a bad way. The visuals are not the most graphically impressive, but like many aspects to this game, there is a charm to its enjoyable nature. I'm having a really good time with this title. Something I noticed right out of the gate is how Trinity Trigger does feel like a game that I have experienced before. That isn't to mean that I am bored by what it has to offer, because it has some cliched elements from the genre, but rather I think Trinity Trigger embraces them and knows who it is going after with this game. It feels like JRPG comfort food. I sorta know what I'm getting, I have had it before, and I just want more of it. The developers do a good job of blending the tropes and elements from the genre, with its setup and even the story and characters, with providing action and upgrades that are both simple yet fun. You could argue that in some areas it might be a bit too simplistic, but sometimes I need something like that, along with the comfort food sort of feel. One thing is certain is that it's always fun. This will come in handy. <laughs> 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 Let's go over some of the action. You will be spending a bunch of your time in combat. The action operates like a hack and slash dungeon crawler. You can perform a set of combos and essentially you need to hack away at any enemy that you see and defeat them all. There is a stamina bar that you need to pay attention to as well. Your attacks will take up some form of stamina. If you're out, you can actually still attack, but you will do significantly less damage. Stamina will regenerate over time. So this is something you need to keep an eye out for, since you are basically dealing nothing if you are empty on stamina. For defense, you have your roll. Your roll actually doesn't use any stamina at all, so you can evade at any time. But the roll actually can help you recover stamina quickly. If you manage to roll right before an enemy hits you, then you will gain some stamina back. This is a simple system, but I really like how it works in the context of the combat. For one, it pushes the player to read and really understand the enemies that they are fighting. Because if you get their attack patterns down and dodge appropriately, then it will be like you are never without any stamina. I also like it because earning back the stamina for an effective roll is satisfying, and it feels like you're earning this extra little win every time you do it. Between the attacking and dodging, Trinity Trigger has an enjoyable combat flow that you always want to be in. Going from attacking, dodging at the right time, and back into attacking makes you feel awesome. It is simple to pick up, and more skilled players will be able to zip around the arenas, never losing much stamina. There are some other attacks and moves you can do as well. For one, as you attack, you'll build up a super bar. Once full, you can unleash harder hitting attacks for a short period of time. There is a form of a super attack that features your entire team as well. On occasion, your weapon will glow, and this will allow you to do one heavy hit. After the initial area, you'll start to earn additional weapons and the combat continues to expand. For example, Cyan will start out with a sword and then earn a bow. Through the use of the shortcuts, you can swap to these easily during a fight, and you'll actually need to do this as some enemies are weaker to certain weapons. You eventually will have a full party of three, and they will have their own unique weapons to use, like one uses a lance and another has a heavy axe. You can actually play the entire game in local co-op, which is a really nice addition, and something I would only see with the Tales of series. Playing by yourself is also just as enjoyable. You can switch to your different party members at any time. The AI does a fine job, though they are pretty much on their own. It doesn't seem like you can give them any commands or set up how they act in battle either. 
Outside of combat, you have the exploration. Overall, I like this stuff, and I think the game does a good job at making areas feel unique enough by giving them some personality. For example, you might fight through a forest during the day, and another forest at night, but the one at night features different enemies and even some mechanics unique to that area. That is something that I appreciated with the dungeons and areas you'll be exploring and fighting through. One area uses different mushrooms throughout the entire thing. Like hitting green ones heals you, yellow will provide you with light to see better, and red are explosive. There was an ice dungeon which made all the areas feel rather slippery. You needed to watch out for spike traps and they were easy to run into. These are even factored into some of the boss fights as well. Again, the same design is applied. They have just enough uniqueness to make each one interesting enough. For example, one fight is in a dark area, so you need to keep hitting those yellow mushrooms to see. The ice dungeon has a boss spawning traps and even enemies later on to take you out. But you'll need to rely on your lance as that tool can break those traps. Stuff like this keeps each of the areas interesting and exciting. I do like how locations let you know how many chests there are there. The map won't tell you where they are. You still need to go out and figure out how to find them all. But knowing how many you have left in an area is a helpful tool that I appreciate. When it comes to progression, you'll gain experience and level up as you defeat enemies. Your base stats just increase. You do have some choice and personalization in some areas. You will earn points that can be used to upgrade your attacks. You can choose what combos you do as well. These can range from how the attacks are done, like thrust moves or ones that hit a wider area, to ones that even give you back a little bit of health each time you hit an enemy. On top of this, there is a crafting system, and you have a few slots where you can equip different passive buffs, like improving your health, recovery, damage, and more. Again, like most things within the game, at least so far, it is simplistic, but done very well, with some nice little nuance-like touches. As far as the story is concerned, this game hits many of the expected JRPG checkboxes. Heroes with lost memories, cute companion creatures, warring factions, stuff like that. And so far, I really like it, along with our trio of heroes that we have. The game does take itself seriously when some of the stuff heats up, but the game overall feels like it has a lighter tone, and it is welcoming. Trinity Trigger feels like the best 3DS RPG that I have played all year. It's winning me over in its charm, with lots of its touches of humor, characters, and its gameplay. The dungeon crawling action is really fun, and the crafting helps to keep things interesting, along with allowing for some personalization to how you play. I will keep reporting back as I keep going, but so far it's an easy recommendation, and one of 2023's underrated games. Have you played Trinity Trigger? What are some of your favorite RPGs from this year? Let me know all of this in the comments down below. If you're interested in being notified of new videos, please hit the subscribe button and bell. And if you would like to support the channel and get early access to content, please check out my Patreon. All of the links will be at the end of this video and within the description. And thank you very much for watching.